dude, have you seen the tote bag? I want the tote. Dude, look at that. Dude, look. Dude, they have it. I have a lens on hold. Can I uh, try it real quick? Yeah, sure. Oh, it's so small. Look how small that front element is, dude. Some girl from Sacramento, yeah, so. Thank you. All right, you're all set. Sweet. Enjoy your new lens. Thank you so weekend. much. Yeah, I will. That. Now we should go play baseball with it. That, that's how this works, right? I have a bat in my car we can use. We have obtained what we were here for, the Nikon 28mm f2.8. This lens is something that I have been looking for for a while for a few reasons that I will be talking about in this video, but I'm really excited to go out and use this. This video is gonna essentially be my first impressions of the lens. We're gonna do a little bit of a POV shoot. And uh, at the end, I'm gonna give you my uh, true first impressions of this lens. So I am really excited to go out and shoot with it today. And uh, yeah, look how tiny that is. Isn't that, isn't that so small? Anyways, let's get around with the video, guys. What is up guys, it is the Project Photography back in the video and today people, today we just picked up this bad boy from Sammy's camera, the 28mm f2.8 for the Nikon Z mount and I'm really excited to be using this lens. Before we actually get into the POV and first impressions part of this actual video, I just wanna give you a little rundown as to why I actually picked up this lens and the needs, use cases that I want for this lens. For me in particular, I bought this lens because I wanted something small, compact, discreet that I could just throw in my bag no matter what I'm doing you know, when I'm hanging out with friends, I just want something that's really small, lightweight, doesn't take up a lot of space in my bag, doesn't take up a lot of space when I'm actually out doing stuff, and I can just take photos at my leisure. It's also perfect for low leverage situations. You know, I'm not trying to go out and shoot weddings and events and all these other great things. I just want to be able to have some fun with the lens. On top of it, I really love the 28mm focal length. I think it is one of the most underrated focal lengths in my opinion. It is not necessarily a 35mm focal length, which for me is not really a standard lens or a wide lens. It's somewhere in this weird middle ground like this is definitely a wide angle lens but it has the compression the feel of something closer to a standard lens which i really love and adore about this lens on top of being just a great travel walk around lens and being super lightweight all those are absolutely great things but this could also potentially be a really good vlogging lens in particular because having something like this plus a dji mic that makes for an extremely extremely tiny setup right there which would be really easy to just walk in be really discreet not have to feel like i'm just out and about vlogging and having this huge setup, something really tiny, really small, people don't really take notice to or offense to. Really great for those situations. And on top of it, the lens was only $275. And that's how much I ended up paying for it. And for something like this that's really small, fits all those needs, I think it is the absolute perfect lens. Now for me, I think the best way to actually go out and test lens is to go out and use it. And for this first impressions, I really wanna give you guys a first look as to you know me actually using the lens, what I would use it for and so on. So that's what we're doing today's video. We're doing a POV photography shoot with this lens. We're going out and shooting here at the Anti Mall in Santa Ana. And then after, I'm giving you guys my true first impressions of this lens. So I'm really excited to use it. And uh, let's go right into the video. What's up, y'all? We are now behind the camera, behind the scenes. So you're taking a first look at me and me shooting actual photography with this lens. So right here, what I'm trying to do is use those leading lines to kind of guide your eyes to the actual subject matter. I think that's what the 28mm focal length actually does very well. Uh, it's able to get that wide angle field of view and get shots like this. So let's go ahead and keep moving on here. And right here, what we're doing is just go ahead and moving forward a bit, you know, walking through this area. And I see these kind of, uh, I don't know what they're called. They're little plant things over here, but I just want to test the close up capabilities of this lens. And I think it actually does a very nice job here. We get a pretty decent amount of separation between the background and the foreground. And I think it really adds a nice sense of depth to the image. And also the micro contrast is really nice in this photo in particular. And you kind of see the edited version right here kind of exemplifies that. So right now what we're doing is moving to kind of the other side of the anti mall I took a few photos here, but nothing really uh, significant in particular that I really like. But after we go ahead and walk through the mall a little, let's just do some photos and whatnot. We're gonna end up at this little kind of post right here. There's some mailboxes. I'm trying to kind of get a little bit of a wide angle, sort of like foreground, background type of feel right here. So right now in the foreground, we have these little succulents and the background, we have the mailboxes. And this is really the F 2.8 shines in. Uh, you're able to get that nice separation, but also having the nice wide angle sort of field of view is also able to create dynamic sort of compositions like this, where you're able to get those 
you know, mailboxes in the background, but also the nice foreground subject matter in focus. From here, I'm going ahead and uh, switch locations up a little bit, walking closer to kind of the other side of the mall. Um, right here is, I kind of see like this wide lab area that I really like. Go ahead and put it into vertical orientation. Kind of use some of the leading lines on, you know, the left and the right side of the kind of image to actually frame the actual photo. I'm using the stairs right here on the left to kind of lead your eyes to more of the center of the image. And I think everything else does a great job in framing the center of the image. And I think the other elements do a great job in centering and framing the other parts of the image, leading your eyes to the middle. And you're kind of seeing in this edited version right here that you're getting a nice like rustic view where the colors to kind of look. And I think in this photo particular is where the micro contrast really came out. Uh, made especially the under parts of the stairs really feels nice and deep and I just really like this photo a lot when it comes to the color and the contrast. So go ahead and keep going here. Uh, right here I see kind of stairs. I want to use more of the wide angle sort of view and use those, again like the stairs and the leading lines and kind of guide your eyes into the actual image and I think stairs are a great way to do that and I think that's why wide angles kind of work right here but edited it does look quite nice. Doesn't have the same nice colors as the kind of previous image but I really like this photo overall. So go ahead and move on right here and right here is kind of the uh, opening of the anti mall uh, and right here is actually where you get a nice field of view uh, when it comes to 28 mil this is really where you can kind of see that the compression of the actual image comes into play right we're not getting too distorted on either side but it does create a nice sort of overall feel of the image you're still like with a wide field of view but you know punch in a little bit more to get some of that compression I, that's really why i like this lens a lot and this isn't a bad photo either. It kind of shows a little bit of the contrast between the sort of green sort of buildings and the more, uh, more of the street feeling uh, types of buildings. So the anti ball actually has two sides of it. Uh, before we do that, let's go ahead and take a little bit of a shopping break because why not? So right here, we're just going to go ahead to the other side of the mall oh, geez, and uh, you're crossing the other side to go yeah. to yeah. the other side. I took a photo of the wine lab, but nothing really significant there. Oh. Right here, I actually see something that I really like and it's the anti mall sign. And there's some ferns on the left hand side. I think that would make a nice uh, photo right there. You kind of see it a little bit in the actual GoPro view. But these ferns are going to be doing the job of kind of framing the image for me on the left hand side. Whereas the anti mall it kind of takes up more of the right hand side. I think it does a really good job. And I really like this photo a lot. Edited, it looks really nice. I like the rustic feel to it. Uh, the lighting today or that day was actually very nice. I really liked it a lot, mainly because it was nice and overcast, kind of created the like, soft feel to the photos. But yeah, that's actually probably one of my favorite photos from this shoot. So go ahead and keep moving forward. Uh, we're going to move more through the actual anti mall. Like I said, there's two sides, but uh, this is probably kind of the main entrance to the anti mall that more people traditionally know about. Uh, right here, I see the architecture up above. And I feel like that'd be a great you know, way to showcase off the wide angle and the compression aspects of this lens. I think the bars on top actually make a nice job at creating some dynamic feel to the movement or to the image. It makes it kind of feel the image just moving forward, not just staying super stagnant. And overall, it's just a really nice image. It just does what you want to do and it kind of encapsulates what the anti mall is about. So go ahead and continue to move on here after I take another photo. But we're kind of moving towards the last end of our photo shoot. Uh, nothing too crazy, too long. Just want to get a few photos in, kind of get a feel for the lens, what it was about. And I think I did a really good job doing that on this actual uh, photo shoot. So right here, we see this kind of like CD kind of walk right here. And what I really want to do is get my friend actually kind of shooting a photo uh, with the actual mirrors, kind of pushing your eyes more towards that way. So that is what this photo is about. French up there shooting photos, and that is the edited version. So that is the end of me actually shooting, guys. Uh, let me know what you thought of the photos. What was your favorite photo? Down in the comments section down below. I'd love to hear what you guys think. But anyways, guys, let's get back to the video. All right, y'all. We just finished shooting with the Nikon 28mm f2.8. It was a pretty interesting lens using for sure. But now we're gonna go back to my place. You know, I'm gonna look at the photos, edit them, and do all that great sort of stuff. And then I'm giving you my first impressions. But first, before that, let's go get some food. All right, y'all, we are now back in the studio and let's talk about this lens, the 28mm f2.8. I have a lot to say about this lens because I actually really enjoy my time shooting with it on my first impressions video. First of all, we're gonna be walking through the ergonomics of this lens, what my thoughts are about that. Then we're gonna talk about the image quality. And lastly, I'm gonna give you my conclusion and thoughts about this lens. So first of all, when it comes to ergonomics, 
This lens is actually very good ergonomically. I was quite surprised because I knew this was a fully plastic lens and it kind of blew me away. First of all, not all plastic is created equal. When you consider the plastic of this lens versus something like a Nikon 50 to 250 DX, this definitely feels much more premium, much more well-built than something like that lens. That feels like a very much cheap plastic lens, whereas this feels like it's actually well-constructed. Even when you're considering just like how the plastic is on the top, the nice matte finish makes it feel a little bit more premium, a little bit more like it's just not just like plastic thrown onto the lens. It feels a lot nicer in the hands. It feels a lot nicer because of that matte finish. And I think the texture of it also definitely helps, but also it being kind of a smaller lens, a little bit more dense, also helps that factor because it doesn't feel like it's cheap. You know, when you're feeling those type of lens, it feels a little bit hollow inside. This feels like there's some weight and some unity to it. Well, the other thing I really want to touch on is that when I was actually autofocusing with this lens, I could definitely feel the autofocus motors moving. Now, I didn't hear it audibly, but when you're actually like using the lens and focusing with it, you can definitely feel it. But with that being said, the autofocus is quite fast. I found no problems with this autofocus speed at all. It was quick when I needed it to be, and especially for video, it does the job quite well. So one thing I really like about this lens is it actually balances very well with the Nikon Z6. This was a little bit of a question mark I had going into buying this lens was, how is it gonna balance with the Nikon Z6? And actually it does a very good job at it. Even though majority of the weight is in the back with the Z6, this actually feels really nice in the hands. It doesn't feel like it's really one side or the other. When you're actually using the lens, it actually feels like it's just one complete cohesive unit. And I really like using it actually. It doesn't feel get very tiring when I'm actually shooting with it. I feel like I can hold it all day and don't have any problems with it. And then the only real complaint I have when it comes to ergonomics is the fact that when I put it up to my eye, it does feel a little bit cramped when I'm actually shooting with it because it is a smaller form factor. You know, you're gonna have that issue of course, but that's just kind of expected when you're shooting with it. Because when I'm actually having my camera up to my hand, my eye, and then holding onto the lens, I feel like my two hands are pretty close together. So that's just something you kind of have to think about the ergonomics when it comes to the lens being small. But other than that, the ergonomics of this lens are actually quite good. And I think it being small, like I said in the beginning of the video, it makes it easier to travel around, walk around with and so on. It does not take too much space in your bag, which is honestly a huge reason why you should pick a lens up like this. You know, you don't want to be carrying around these big lenses all day for something that's very much casual. This is great for those low leverage situations specifically for ergonomic reasons. Now let's talk about image quality, which I think is actually really important when talking about a lens like this, because traditionally, I, I would not call it a pancake lens quite yet, but these very small lenses traditionally have had, you know, poor fall off, uh, not as great image quality, not great micro contrast, the images seem quite soft, but this lens definitely does not have any of those problems. When it comes to micro contrast, it has absolutely fantastic micro contrast. It helps to create a little bit of the depth that you know creates a great photo. They don't feel flat. They feel like the images really pop out of the camera. And that's one thing I really look for in a lens like this. Like you wanna make sure that the lenses aren't feeling really flat, especially when it comes to wide angle lenses that can tend to be quite a problem. Now, when it comes to sharpness, this lens is very sharp, even at f2.8, but I would caution you when I'm saying that because if you're shooting you know, wider subjects, you, know, you wanna get the whole thing in focus, you definitely still wanna be shooting at f8. And that's where this lens really shines. Shooting at f8, you get the nice you know, corners being really sharp, no fallout in the corners. You get everything in focus and that's really what you want with a lens like this because you're going to be shooting mainly wide angle stuff with it and you know that's really important to consider when picking up this lens. But even at f2.8, it is very sharp. I was shooting close up subjects and you can actually get pretty close to your, to your subjects even though this is a 28 mil, I feel like you get a really interesting kind of macro perspective because it's not just you know, compressed all the way. You get the nice kind of field of view with a wide angle lens, but still go up close to your subject. And that's one thing I really like about this lens is that the 28 mil focal length is perfect for, you know, wide angle shots, but also doesn't make it feel like it's super wide and the edges are distorted and so on. This gives a nice feeling of compression, which I really like about this lens. And the thing about this lens is that, you know, it's at f2.8, so you wouldn't think that it has a lot of depth of field, but if you're shooting specific subjects that require depth of field, you can definitely make it happen. When I was shooting, these photos up close, you can see that there's a bit of separation, a pretty good amount of separation between the background and the foreground. So even though this is only f2.8, it is not of course meant for things like portraiture, but in a pinch, you can really get the background to be blown out the way you want it to. And the last sort of thing I wanna talk about is that there's a little bit of a fall off at f2.8, but it's not bad. You can definitely clean that up in either post or at, you know, when you're shooting at f8, which if you're shooting a wider scene, you definitely want that. So. In this case, it actually is not too bad of an issue, but it's something to definitely consider. So now let's jump into the conclusion. 
And overall, this lens is absolutely fantastic. This is perfect for like that person that wants to travel, like I said, that has those low leverage situations. I wanna make it light and easy to carry around. This is perfect for a person like that. And overall in the Nikon Z system, this is, this and probably the 40 millimeter F 2.8 is the best value for the dollar that you can get. I would argue that high majority of photographers should be either having a 28 mil or a 40 mil in their bag for that specific purpose of daily carry with your friends, low leverage situations and all that. This is perfect for that. And honestly, if you're getting into the Nikon Z system, this should probably be one of the first lenses you pick up just because it's light, easy, and you know, it's really good on that price point. I think that's something that is the Nikon Z system has kind of had a problem with like getting those nice budget lenses out there. This definitely fits the bill and you're not sacrificing on image quality, which actually made me really think about this lens and where the Nikon Z system is as a whole. We've really gotten to a point where all lenses are really incredible. You know, back in the day with F mount, when you were buying a lens, you would sometimes have to sacrifice image quality and performance for a you know specific need that you're meeting. And that's really a problem when you're considering that, you know, photographers have needs to meet. And when I was picking out lenses back in the day, at least when like a few years ago, you know, I would choose lenses based on great optical image quality, not necessarily what I needed, because sometimes you just really wanted the best, the best when it comes to image quality, but you might be sacrificing your needs. So there was always trade-offs when using the F mount. But when it comes to the Z mount, I think that's the one thing that they've done really well. All the lenses in this system are incredible. I've not used a single lens, but I'm like, wow, that is not a good lens. Even down to the kit lenses from the Z50, the 50 to 250 was a really good lens, actually. Everything up until the 24 to 70, you know, all the lenses that I've had and owned in the Nikon Z system have been absolutely incredible. You don't have to make any trade-offs with the Nikon Z system. And for me, that's what this lens represents. There's no trade-offs, even when it comes to price. You can be confident that whatever lens you're buying in the Nikon Z system, it is going to be absolutely fantastic. I think, you know, when Nikon was first, you know, coming out with their Nikon Z system, they were talking a lot about light and so on. Like, oh, we can make these fashion lenses. But for me, it is the image quality and the improved sharpness and the improved sense of feel to these lenses that really make this Nikon Z system incredible. So that is pretty much the end of the video. That is my summation of the Nikon 28mm f2.0. I'm definitely gonna be coming out with a full review in the future. This is just my first impression, my first thoughts on it. I wanna test it a little more when it comes to image quality, how the f2.0 works, you know, what the sharpness actually looks like in the future and so on. So that is the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for experiencing the world with me today. If you have any thoughts and opinions about the Nikon, 28 mil f2.8 let me know down in the comment section down below anyways guys rate comment subscribe and i'll catch you guys in the next one